Back by popular demand, we are reacting to another Hey Bricky video. Y'all really seem to be liking these reaction videos, and Hey Bricky keep, uh, still is turning out amazing content. So he released a new video recently all about the possibility of a third park on that end where the symbol lot is and the hotels and all that good stuff. He made a whole video on it. It's great stuff. We're going to break it down like we always do here on OG55. Welcome aboard to another episode of OG55. We are once again reacting to a Hey Bricky video all about a third park's possible location or maybe not possible location. We're going to discuss it. But before we do that, George, welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me back on. It's always a good time uh, talking in-depth uh, theme parks and film and all that good jazz with you, bro. Yeah. Now, we recently did a, a great live show with our boy Tones and candid and girly nerd i'm gonna link that live show at the end of this video because it was phenomenal we had a really really good time and it was all about our top five favorite pixar uh movies and a lot of laughs george looking 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 snazzy in that video so check it out at the end of this video and make sure you subscribe to bad thoughts studio they do a lot of great work over there. A lot of nerdy stuff, like what we do here, like with, uh, but more studio style, side with Marvel, yeah. Star Wars, all that good stuff. But uh, George, shall we dive into Hey Bricky? Let's do it. All right. And for those of you at home, I got YouTube Premium. Finally, I got it today. So we do not have to worry about any ads. We can watch Bricky uninterrupted via YouTube Premium. A breaking down one of the number one things I've seen in the Disneyland Ford comment section below. I want to break down the myth on why I believe the North and South parking lots will become part of DCA and Disneyland, but they will not become their own theme park. Let's break down why I see this as being something Disney does not want to do by accidentally building the most convoluted theme park ever. Today, we're going to break down okay, real why quick. See, exactly. This is why I love Ricky. Okay, so he's right. When he said the most convoluted convoluted theme park ever, that's exactly my issue with this plot of land, right? Because like, look, convenience wise, it's perfect because it would basically be walking distance just like Disneyland and DCA is. But the problem with this piece of land, unless you're going to bulldoze Disneyland Hotel and you're going to bulldoze the Pixar Place Hotel, it's not a great spot for it because it, you have all these hotels kind of littered in that spot. You got to work the theme park around it. It leads to a messy, messy layout. We're going to get into it, but what do you think overall? I mean, would you agree with him uh, before we even dive into the video, really, that it would be kind of convoluted? I mean, definitely, but actually it's not in the context of what you think oh. it is involving the hotels, but the way that B Bricky describes this, because I have watched this earlier, it was quite fascinating. It's not as simple as jumping from one theme park to the next, even though that that plot of land is adjacent to the other theme parks. There would be a lot of um, uh, maneuvering and crowd congestion, um, despite it being very close, if it became a third gate. Interesting. Okay, let's dive in. I do not believe that Disneyland Ford will be making a third gate on the western end of Disneyland. I'm talking about everything that's on the other side of Disneyland Drive. To give you an indication where I'm at, I'm standing in the pinch point, which is the number one reason why I do not believe that everything on the west of me will become a theme park. Behind me is Disneyland Drive. Over here is Downtown Disney, the Disneyland Hotel, and then over on my upper left would be the Pixar Place Hotel. Parking lots on each side, as we saw in the Disneyland Ford concept artwork, where it looked like it's gonna be a giant theme park, where eventually this huge parking lot behind me will become an extension of DCA and not, not a standalone theme park, which looks that way in the concept artwork. And Disney has teased it both ways. Would this be an additional gate or in this other art, 
would this be an extension of DCA? And then the parking lot north of me, would that become an extension of Disneyland proper? Today, what I wanna do is walk you from this parking lot to the other parking lot and explain to you why making all of this one theme park would be the worst decision that Disney could ever make. And okay, and before he continues, if you do not, if you are not following or subscribe to Hey Bricky, go ahead and do that because this is this is phenomenal content. We love this stuff. If you're if you're a Disney parks nerd, this is like oh my god, man, right on steroids. A, oh, absolutely. <laughs> this is what we live for. You know what I'm saying? So he does great work. He puts a lot of a lot of work into it. So make sure you 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 follow and subscribe to him if you haven't already. Should sure, some there's love. probably some Absolutely. creative workarounds that could make it happen, but at what cost and what would have to be subtracted to make this addition work? I think the easiest way to look at this is I'm standing in an expansion of Disney's California Adventure, which will pair very well with the Pixar Place Hotel, giving guests the ability to instantly leave that hotel and go right into the theme park. Made a whole video about it. That's not what we're talking about today. But that video did create a conversation of a lot of people saying, I don't know, I think they'll end up making it all one theme park. And today I thought, great time to break down why that won't work. So yeah, th that's interesting that he got a lot of comments about why it'll be like a lot of people think it'll be one theme park. You know, it's it's like you were mentioning, you were hinting because this is my first time watching this video, by the way. I mean, full disclosure, I like to get in. I like to go into these like like my my raw reactions, you know. But I kind of can kind of see like where he's going with this, like logistically, like what are you going to do when you have a theme park wrapped around this whole thing? And then you have all these hotels and even even have downtown Disney there, right? Like butting up against it. There's a lot of things happening all in one space. Mm -hmm. How how do you how do you kind of logistically like operations wise? It seems like yes. that would be a total nightmare. Yeah, it definitely. And as his video progresses, you will see and the one description that I could say of what I got out of it, kind of like the, how you um, use the, the term phrase of the spaghetti bowl in Tomorrowland with the monorail and Autopia and uh, the subs. Think of that, but utilizing the whole entire resort in that notion. Can I, this is the thing that kind of, <laughs> that kind of frustrates me about the Disney community. I love y'all. I love the Disney community, but Hey, sometimes, you know, even with family, you get annoyed with, annoyed with family members, right? You love them, but you get annoyed. The thing with the Disney fan community that kind of drives me nuts here is why do fans dance around the obvious? You have 75 acres with a Toy Story lot. Why is everyone trying to figure a way to do everything except the park in the 75 acres? So, so oh, third theme park? Well, let's squeeze it into this area with two hotels and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. and mess. Or, oh, well, why don't we throw in a Disney Springs over there in 75 acres? This is way away. I don't understand what this is where it's like everything except the obvious is being suggested. <laughs> Well, guess what, OG? Bricky addresses that. Does he? <laughs> I know, for, no, does he for real? Yeah, he brings it up, yes. Oh, that's hilarious, bro. Okay, hold on. Let's go, let's go. Simply put, we are talking about all of this space over here on the left. California Adventure taking over this region, and then Disneyland taking over this region. Let me break down to you one of the main reasons why I don't think it will work. And I have five of these. I think each five of them will make sense as I break them all down on why this needs to be extensions of the existing park. And Only five? I was hoping for 55. No, okay. <laughs> 55. Got its own theme park. So let's pretend for a moment that this doesn't become an extension of DCA, but becomes its own theme park. You're going to take guests from the south side of the new theme park and have them connect with the north side of this theme park. But this is where it gets really tricky because there are going to be so many other things happening in this tight corridor. So on this available tight pathway here, we're going to have all of the guests go from the south side of the new theme park up to the north side of the new theme park on the other side of the Disneyland Hotel. But also in this exact same oh, space, oh, like, we're going to have to you, make... I got you. So basically what Bricky is saying here that hypothetically, if this, all this whole area was to become the third gate, how people would have to travel if they were on one end of the park to be able to get to the other side. Gotcha. 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 
unique way for people that are trying to go from the Disneyland Hotel and the Pixar Place Hotel over to downtown Disney. So now we have three levels of traffic, but let's go up another one because how are people gonna get into this third theme park? The only feasible way to make it happen is from the end of downtown Disney. Right. So now you have a fourth customer that's trying to come over into this area. So between hotel guests, downtown Disney guests, guests wanting to get into the new park, and then guests trying to go north and guests trying to go south, we are gonna have five different guest needs in this one little narrow corridor. So let's break this down logically. Five different guests. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 one... hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Bricky, using you're using logic? Come on, man. That's not <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the fandom here, bro. We don't use logic here. No. <laughs> you can only go over and under so many times before you run out of options. Right. So if Disney did do a skyway taking hotel guests over the new theme park into downtown Disney, okay, that solves that problem of hotel guests. But what about general guests that just want to get into downtown Disney or the guests that are trying to get into this theme park with downtown Disney? Yeah. And, just and here's the thing, all kidding aside, I mean, this is something that I didn't, I mean, even like we, we, we've speculated too, you know, about yeah. what it, well, this could possibly be a third park. But I never what, looked at it at this level because automatically no. you think, because even, even, um, uh, Mr. Weba had mentioned, you know, right. this would be a great for a third gate because it's right next to DCA and Disneyland. So when we look at it on the map, it's like, yeah, we could just make a, you know, a, a crossing path, you know, have an entrance and right. you're good to go. But it seems like there's a lot more logistics to this than than meets the eye there's a lot more and and he and, and it's 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 kind of it was staring at everybody in the face really it's an, the obvious thing really and you know i think we even overlooked it i mean it's there's so much it, it would bottleneck this so much it would be a disaster yeah i mean literally a disaster now there are pros to having the park on this end because like like i think uh, 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 mr Weber said you know having it just within walking distance of the other two parks. Absolutely. That's a benefit to it, you know, but this is a really big con here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think I would rather have it. If we're going to have a third gate, which I think we will, I think the toy store lot is better. I'd rather have that transportation use a, a, maybe get a work with Anaheim, get a dedicated bus lane, like universal is getting for Epic yeah. universe, something like that. I think that's a lot more operationally friendly it's not the most convenient necessarily, but it's, I think it works better operationally than what would happen with this thing. I mean, yeah, big time. Yeah. Being fully redeveloped at its very edge. A lot of people say, why don't you talk about the former ESPN building or the old Rainforest Cafe? Well, I don't talk about it because Disney doesn't talk about it. So let's pretend for a moment that Disney does remove the old ESPN building and even the Rainforest Cafe. If these buildings were to be removed, it still doesn't fix the problem of the five-way connection point. It could give more space to route some guests around, but Disney would have to get very, very creative with overpasses, underpasses, maybe even a tunnel to make all five guest experiences work the way they need them to. But also let's talk about an entryway to this third gate, because really the only place that it could logically make sense would be the end of downtown Disney, right. which would mean that if you parked over at Pixar Pals and Mickey and Friends, you have to still get on the tram, go all the way down to the tram drop off, work your way up downtown Disney to get into this park. But that adds a whole other level of problems because the grand entryway to this park would probably be somewhere very, very near to this pinch point because you can't really bring the guest in any further to the north or to the south because it would conflict with things that already exist there. So the most that you could do, maybe if you took out the ESPN zone or you took out the old Rainforest Cafe, you would have the grand entryway to this park over in that section. Still would have to take the tram down walk back up but you could have those people dumping over there but that still would have four other different guest needs exactly where i'm standing yeah but when we think about the jigsaw puzzle that will be the new theme parks coming over into the parking lots 
This will not go away. Over on the western end, the Pixar and Mickey and Friends parking garages will still be the major way that people come into the Disneyland Resort when they're coming from the west. So therefore, you have to keep in mind that if everything over there becomes theme park, this will be a no-fly zone. You will have to come in here, take the tram to downtown Disney, or then you make your decisions of where you're gonna go. So walking in this way will be a thing of the past. The hotels will have their own proprietary entrance. You'll come in here, your only option will be the tram. The tram will take you over, which would then mean that any entry point to a new theme park would have to be at the end of downtown Disney because we're no longer walking over here. There would not be a grand entryway right. into that third gate right behind me. And could you imagine how you would get to that entryway if you parked over in the new parking lot on the east side of Harbor? So that alone, just the funneling of people from these garages, like the Esplanade is still going to be the central hub of the Disneyland Resort. It'll Dude, th this video is absolutely brilliant. I really like this a lot. This is actually one of my favorite Hey Berkey videos. Yeah, moving like, thus like, far, this one was genius. Yeah, like of his Disneyland Forward like recent videos, I think this is probably my favorite one because it's like, it's 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 common sense, you know. What I'm saying, and it's it's something that a lot of fans, including ourselves, to be honest, we didn't really tap into it like it. this. Absolutely. Yeah, we didn't really tap into it like this on this level. It's fascinating. Be there where different decisions are revealed to you, and those decisions, I think, are going to be two parks there not walking all the way down to go to a third park with just a very weird way of coming and going out of it because you would have to every single night walk all the way down town Disney to get on the trams to bring you back to here. Whereas if it's just an extension of the existing parks, you would just cross back over the bridge, work your way out the gate you normally do. It'd be no big deal. You're used to it. It's just like Galaxy's Edge, but a little bit further. So this gets removed in this situation and we have this be the entryway to this new immersive third park. The hotel guests would probably have access to it. I think that's gonna happen regardless if it's an extension of the theme parks or its own gate. These parks will be put here. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point because, and I think that's a big point for Disney. <laughs> I mean, when you're Disney and you're looking at the money, Right, you're. Oh, I said. Uh, you oh, said oh, it. I said money, bro. And I haven't done a money drop in forever. Here we go. There we go. When when you're when you're Disney and you're thinking about the money end of it, though that those theme park expansions, both for DCA and Disneyland, drastically change the math for both of those hotels, mm -hmm. both the Pixar Place Hotel and the Disneyland Hotel. You can start charging maybe even double what you charged before because now these parks are literally inside theme park expansion lands. I mean, you know, um, well, Disneyland hotel, maybe not quite as much, but that Pixar one is definitely. Mm. Yeah. The Pixar place. I'm trying to, it would be close. You would be close to, but yeah, you would be, yeah, you would be very adjacent. I'd say to, to yeah. the expansion of Disneyland. Right. So, but, and they can still, that, it, you're close, let me put it this way, you're close enough to, to justify a price hike for Disneyland Hotel too, probably. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's, I think, what Disney's looking at. I mean, I'm sure part of the equation with that whole expansion is that element of it. You know, if you add, like he was saying with Pixar Place, an entrance from that hotel where you walk out and you're in DCA, you know, because right now you got to go across the street and the whole thing, right? If you right. had access like you do at the Grand Cali, that Pixar place, the value for that hotel goes way up, dude. Way up. No matter, Do you think, no matter like, what even if they like. could like maneuver the, the Disneyland, may, maybe not like every building, but maybe like have one of the towers be a specialty tower where then you can get access into the expansion pad for Disneyland Park. Because if you could do that, then all three Disneyland hotels on property will have access at some point into the, right. into the theme parks yeah i think that might be a goal they might even they might even you know maybe they, who knows maybe they'll even tear one of those old towers down and build a new one to to make it like more purpose built where it's like mm -hmm. attached to the disneyland expansion or something like that that's a possibility too but we'll see man um but that's i think disney is definitely eyeballing that for sure to elevate the experience and the prices of staying in these hotels 
So that would work. But what about those hotel guests that want to go into downtown Disney? We still have to find a path for that, or we have to find a path for downtown Disney folks trying to get over into the hotels or just trying to get to downtown Disney. The Grand Californian currently has a majority of its parking underneath it. Pixar Place has the hotel parking lot garage behind it. And then the Disneyland Hotel has its own parking garage out front of it. So parking for the hotels, I'm not worried about. But making all of this one theme park, I just don't see how it works. And I'm not even talking about not enough attractions to make it work. Like, I do think that with this plot of land, Disney could make a fun third gate. Yeah. But the problem of getting everybody in, I just don't think that that's worth it. Had Disney not just spent all the money and effort redoing this far end of downtown Disney, I would say that it would be an argue for this to become its own gate. But even if the Rainforest Cafe were to be demolished and right where I'm standing was the grand entryway to this new park, we would still have a problem with how tight it is getting everybody from the north and the south and then also dealing with hotel guests. So if this were the grand entryway into a third gate, they would have to then make a ramp that would go over the connection point between New Park North and South, okay? So we have now figured out how to get guests just into here, and we figured out how to get hotel guests back and forth, and we have guests going from North and South. It's a lot happening in one condensed spot. Yeah. I, I do think that it would be possible, but I don't see the expense. He's right. He's right. And this is the thing. Anywhere you build in Anaheim that you build a third park, you're going to have challenges. Okay. So like when I, when I, when I, when I advocate for the Toy Story lot to be a third park, right. I'm not naive to think like, Oh, well, there's no, that's just, it can be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You just put it there. Right. Like I think our friend Michael Weber was talking about it. Like, where do you put the entrance to that? Cause the parking lot comes right up against the street. Like there, there has to be a way in and, 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 and all this other stuff. So there's challenges with that. Also, you know, it's 75 acres, but you need backstage, you need, you need, you need um, all kinds of stuff. Right. So there's going to be challenges no matter where you put it. And even with the toy story lot, but with this, with this plot of land, and how congested it already is, and the points that Bricky's making with all these connection points, it's it's too many problems. There's too many problems to overcome. When you're when you go across the way to Toy Story, it, maybe you have one or two problems. But this is like you know, it's crazy. Go ahead, George. And and where the this kind of this interlocking section is, you can't alter it in any way. You can't expand it out. You can't maneuver it because you're then going to start disrupting other things surrounding it. So you would have to, in order to make section A successful, you would have to change B, C, D, E, and F <laughs> just to get A to work. Well, and here's the thing. Okay, there was a concept for the Indiana Jones adventure, and you know this. You know, we right. talked about it before on the channel, where they were going to have the, um, the railroad, the Disneyland Railroad, the Indiana Jones ride, the current ride, um, the Jungle Cruise, mm -hmm. and a new mine cart attraction all convene in one show building. There's actual concept art for this, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing or what I heard back in the day, and the reason why they didn't do this is because of logistics. If one of these attractions breaks down, you kind of have to shut them all down. And it's gonna, it's gonna, now, now you're not down one attraction, you're down four or whatever it is. So it's kind of like that with this, what you're saying, George, where it's like when it's all interconnected like this, this park is is married now to these hotel structures and things like that. So now if you want to alter the theme park, you have to have the hotels in mind and everything else connected to it. It's not just its own little world. Mm -hmm. It's all this other crap that's connected. So it makes it way complicated, even, when, even if you get it built. Going forward, like you were saying, with expansions or anything else, anytime you want to change anything, it's an issue. It's like the spaghetti bowl that we talk about all the time in Tomorrowland. Look at, I think a lot of the reason why that has been so delayed in addressing that motorboat area and even Autopia, and the reason why Disney keeps kicking the can down that road is because- you didn't have to shut that whole entire thing down. 
the whole thing down. It's a mess. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a convoluted mess in there. And to undo all that's very expensive. You're basically doing that on a grand scale over here. If you were to build this part. And, and honestly, and do I feel like Disney will eventually address Tomorrowland? Absolutely. But I feel like people are kind of missing the point as to why they haven't already. That is one of the main reasons why they would have to shut everything down and to have a whole section of Disneyland park, a whole entire land, basically shut down multiple attractions shut down then people would start bitching and complaining oh well this whole entire land shut down my park ticket isn't that that value enough for it it's like oh oh look at all these construction walls look at all this look at all that so disney can't touch that yet i think that once they get disneyland forward up and running i feel like tomorrowland will slowly come down the beaten path like down at the very end of the list but there's a reason for it there's a reason for it. Absolutely. Well said, George. Well said. And all of the deconstruction and moving everything around, I just don't think that it's worth it because I believe their goal is more capacity at these parks to truly make it to where you feel like you can't get it all done in one day to sell more hotel tickets, to sell more theme park tickets, more multi-day tickets. I know there is a discount on the multi-day, but really the idea is to try to get people here as many days as possible, spending as long as possible. And then there's the infrastructure costs. To add on new lands to an existing theme park is way cheaper than to add a whole third park that needs its own set of management, infrastructure the whole development of that is way more complicated than just saying check it out new tunnel new land <laughs> and then there's what i believe what's going to happen out at the toy story parking lot will definitely become a standalone theme park they're not going to put more shopping already in a struggling shopping area the future of shopping is doomed at best and with oc vibe showing up orange county Anaheim does not need another major shopping thoroughfare. Thank you, Bricky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so exhausted by this conversation with with, fan, with the fans about how we need another, we need a Disney Springs over in Toy Story a lot. Look, brick and mortar, it, he's right. Brick and mortar retail is, yeah. it's not dead completely, but it is definitely dying. Amazon and online shopping have, have, have really crippled this industry. And so really I, honestly too, that would be completely hypocritical of Disney to put in a shopping district or a West Coast Disney Springs over there. Because if that would be the case, they would have bulldozed downtown Disney. Why are they adding more to it if they're going to put a whole other shopping plaza over there? They would put no money into downtown Disney. And all I hear, all I hear is, oh, but, 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 oh, gee, it's not just going to be shopping and dining. It's going to be a hotel, too. Well, Bricky addresses that. He addressed that just a second ago when he said the goal of this is to to make it seem like you can't do it all in one day. The only way Disney accomplishes that is by building another park. Um, another mall isn't going to get people to book um, a room at, at, at one of these hotels. It, it certainly doesn't justify another hotel. You build another hotel over there with a Disney Springs. It's not going to do as well as people's, if you have a new park. People's not even going into Garden Walk right now. Why? It's it's right. a shopping plaza. And here's the thing. And people can argue to say, oh, well, Disney Springs, uh, well, Disney World is successful. Yes, it is. But while Disney World is a gigantic vacation <clears throat> complex, there's so much more into it they already have four theme parks they have two water parks they have over 20 plus resort hotels they have golf courses there's so much added onto walt disney world that it works but when you place a disney springs type of plaza smack dab in the middle of of anaheim that's yeah adjacent to disneyland but look at the distance do you think people are is, is really going to waste all their time to walk all the way over for a disney springs no but i bet you sure as hell they'd walk over there for a third gate exactly and they'll book another they'll book a hotel room for a third gate or an extra day for a third day for for a third gate you're not going to get more hotel bookings off of another mall i'm telling you right now 
So I don't care if they build a mall and that mall includes a hotel. The hotel is useless at that point if it's not connected in some way to another theme park. It just yeah. is. It's, it's pointless. And I and Disney knows this. Disney knows it. It's the obvious decision. I've said it so many times. The artwork that you see on the Disneyland Forward website was to sell the city on the zoning. They don't want to put a theme park in the artwork in that Toy Story lot before the city voted. If they if they even hinted that was going to be another theme park, it would open a can of worms and the residents would go nuts. The city would push back. It would cause a whole slew of problems before the city voted on it. That's mm -hmm. why they wanted to keep their cards close to the vest on the third park. They didn't mm -hmm. want to put it out there. It's a third park. Look at look how the residents were acting at that city council vote uh, just a few weeks ago. But just just had just Disney buying Magic Way. Mm -hmm. All the drama we heard. Can you imagine if they admitted they were doing a third park? Oh my gosh! Oh gosh. They would have sure. blew a gas. That will <laughs> become a third park, and that makes sense. Because that is its own thing. It sits in its own footprint, giving Disney a nice, clean palette to build a truly epic theme park. Not an epic universe, but an epic theme park. Because Disney does their best work, like every artist, when they have a blank slate. Connecting all of this together, it could be done, but it would be the most convoluted layout for a theme park ever. It would have no central plaza. It would have no flow. It would be surrounded by hotels because don't forget, when we connect them, we're right next to the hotels. Right. We can hide all of the hotels by putting stuff further out in the parking lot, but we can't hide the hotels when we have guests running right next to them. So therefore it works against the thematic part of Disney trying to shoehorn it into this very convoluted shape. Whereas if they're going to do a true third park, why not go to Toy Story where they have a blank canvas to grow an amazing story from? Mm -hmm. And I also think that doing this piecemeal will give them bigger, better results at a faster pace. What it takes to build an entire theme park, especially a theme park that's being built around three different hotels, a main street, a downtown Disney district, like that type of construction is a long-term investment. And then you start to get a return. However, if they can say, hey, check it out, we've now expanded DCA for a new land and then another new land shows up, they could do it in drops, which brings people back to the resort time and time again. So right. one summer's offering is something big has been expanded to DCA. And then the next summer or summer after that's big offering is there's now something new that you haven't done yet at Disneyland. It keeps adding and adding, giving them more time to spread out the costs, but also to spread out the storytelling. Right. And that's important. And a lot of, a lot of people are like complaining about that element of it. I hear a lot of complaining, oh, Disneyland Forward is a 40 year plan. That's a good thing. You don't want them to blow their whole load like in the first like five or six years. You want them to, to space this mm -hmm. out. Number one, because you don't want to you don't want to be back to square one again in a decade. You want to have room to grow for years and years to come, number one. But if, in terms of business, which is what Bricky is talking about, you want to space out these big investments. So, you know, you have, like you said, the DCA expansion. You let the, you let the hype and all that, you know, um, center around that. Once the hype for that starts to kind of fizzle out a little bit, then you open the Disneyland stuff and then you have the hype resurgence again. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a steady maintain, maintaining of the attendance and everything in the hotel occupancy where if you do it all in a few years, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're, you're cannibalizing your, your, your big investments. It, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. And especially to, and, and I do agree with uh, uh, Tom Corliss when he said, uh, well, let me start off the, the thing. The one thing I don't agree with Tom Corliss was exactly what Bricky was proving that Tom was saying that all those, the, the Toy Story parking lot, the downtown Disney parking lot. Um, I'm sorry, did I say Toy Story? I meant Simba. Um, that was all going to be for the third gate. Oh, that that's, what I Tom, just, that's what Tom said? That's what Tom said. He oh. said that he feels like all that was going to be the third gate. Gate, I disagree with that, especially now of how Bricky is like proving. But the one thing that I do agree with Tom was what he said was 
the main goal for Disneyland forward in the long haul is to get that third gate open. It is. And and a big part of that third gate is hotel occupancy. Like Bricky has been saying this whole time. Disney wants that. You know what I'm saying? And you're only going to get that really you're going to get it. Well, okay. I'll take that back. You're not only going to get it with a third gate, but it will, it will increase substantially with a third gate because of the, because of the psychology. I remember the arguments back in the day about DCA. Should they do a second gate or should they just make one giant in Disneyland? Disneyland could be 900 acres. Psychologically, it's still one park though. So fans go, Oh, one park. I can do that in a day, whether it's 90 acres or 900 acres, it doesn't really matter. The normie thinks one park. Oh, I can do it in a day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you have two parks, you can even have less stuff w- w- combined with those two parks than the one giant park. But if, if you have two parks, psychologically, the normie's going, Oh, well, it's two parks. I got to get, t- I got to book a hotel. Right? Mm-hmm. So the same thing happens with the third gate. Once you add that third gate, even if the third gate only has two rides, it doesn't matter. The psychology is it's a third gate. I need another day at the hotel mm-hmm. and they're booking hotel. Now they're booking more rooms to see what audiences need so they don't invest heavily now on a bunch of stuff that might not be super relevant in a decade, but laying out a little bit over the next 20, 30 years gives them the ability to stay relevant and to keep making decisions based on those guests needs. Pretty much the best analogy I have for that is when you give your kids a bunch of gifts, they kind of find one or two they get excited about, but other gifts just kind of like, Ah, uh, whatever. They're overwhelmed. They've had too much. But when you just give your kid one thing that's special, they cherish and love it. And I think staggering it out like that would be a really great way to do it, where one day the big news is this is going to open up to Disneyland. And maybe that happens after we've already got new DCA further down the path. That's a really and good I've analogy. Also heard he people theorize that that's a great analogy. That's a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. He well, he's really he's really good. Bricky's really good at sort of um, breaking things down into like really digestible pieces of information. Yeah, he like takes, this is he takes topics that we already know, but he breaks it down in a way where it's like, okay, I know why it makes sense, but yet he just proved why it makes sense. <laughs> well, yeah, and this is a very the, when he was talking about those connection points that could have like. Anyone else talking about that, it would have been lost because it's so complex, kind of like explaining all that. But Bricky has a knack for like, like, you know, really packaging the material, like the information in a very concise way and a very digestible way where it's understandable, you know, Mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, if I was trying to explain that, (laughs) it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have turned out as good like that. Like Bricky did it. He's really good at really um, packaging this stuff in a clear and concise way. It's, It's really well done. They think Disney is playing the long game and they're eventually going to buy Disneyland Drive. So there will be no worrying about going over or under the road. They'll just acquire it. And to that, I'll say the struggle that has been getting Magic Way, which is really just a block that they wanted to purchase, that was the most contentious, most pushback they got on the entire Disneyland Ford project. If they wanted to buy Disneyland Drive, which is a major thoroughfare. I don't think the city of Anaheim is going to go for that. And I also don't think that they really need to. Three bridges would suffice on getting everybody from the existing parks over to the new theme parks. Way cheaper to build a couple of theme bridges than to buy a major artery from a city. And when I talk about Disney... And and Disney, right now at least, okay, I don't know how it's going to be in the future. Right now, though, Mm -hmm. Disney and Universal, they like these sort of grand reveal lands, right? When you're doing like Epic Universe. Epic Universe, that entire park is is based on that premise of going through the portal and you get the grand reveal. Every land is grand reveal. Cars land even, right? Grand reveals. Galaxy's Edge, you walk through, grand reveal. It's all these grand reveal kind of things. The bridge element of this expansion is tailor-made for that grand reveal element for these new lands. Because it forces you into that. It's that narrow bridge that you're going over, and you get that big reveal, and they love that right now. They love it. Mm -hmm. Building bridges, I don't mean like the bridge that I'm standing on. I'm talking like the bridge that you see over on downtown Disney, where when you're going over Disneyland Drive, 
you literally have no idea that you are on a bridge. So whatever Disney would build to take Disneyland and bring it across the street would be fully immersive. You would have no idea that's what you were doing. Right. If I asked you right now, where exactly does the bridge start and stop at downtown Disney? Would you even know where that transitional moment is? No. And how many times did you go across that before you realized that you were on a bridge? Oh, wait, wait, so, wait, wait. I think that's a little bit relatable for this guy, huh? That is. That is. What happened? Actually, what happened? Well, uh, so I met up with uh, with our friend, Mr. Uh, Michael Weba, and uh, we just decided to just walk around the, the resort area, kind of scoping out some streets, some possibilities of what – uh, they would do with Disneyland Forward, like after the Eastern Gateway and everything. So we walk through downtown Disney, and uh, Mike says to me, well, probably what they would end up doing is making multiple bridges that would connect from the existing side of the the parks to the newer ex uh, extension part of the parks, sort of like what we're standing on now. And I said, what do you mean that we're standing on now? <laughs> And he says, well, we're standing on a bridge right now. He says, we're on top of Disneyland Drive. And I said, we're on a, this is a bridge? And he said, yeah, let me show you. And over on the side, like the facade where they have like those, um, like the shrubbery planners. and the planners and stuff. And he said, just peek your head over. And I look over and I see the freaking street and cars are passing underneath us. And I thought, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I thought we were just on flat gravel. Yeah, no, yeah, and and I would imagine for the theme park bridges, it'll it'll even be more, uh, even better, even better than that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. it'll be like a bridge, but it's completely enclosed, like a little cave or something. You know? Yeah. You know, especially with the Pandora thing, I can see them doing a cave, like a bridge cave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because they're gonna want to really immerse you. Gonna probably go through like this, like cake, uh, like this little cavern. At the very end of the cavern, <gasps> oh my god! You know, <laughs> the way of water. I think when you say bridges, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a full designed land bridge that will have theming, possibly shops, stores, a restaurant. Like there could be a lot on that bridge where you don't even realize that you've gone from the old land to That's the new land. That's interesting. So I don't see that part of it happening. What's that? That's really interesting. I must have missed that from earlier. Because we always talk about that the Disneyland Resort doesn't have enough restaurants. And a lot of people are saying, okay, well, you could add, you know, more shopping into a West Coast Disney Springs that'll go into the Toy Story parking lot. Well, if you add more shopping and possibly dining on the bridge itself, sort of kind of how like they do at Downtown Disney, where I didn't even know I was standing on a bridge. That's very enticing that you could actually put possibly a restaurant on the bridge. You could try to, yeah. I mean, that would be interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Or at the very least, you can do like the little ODV, the outdoor vending stuff. Right. Yeah. Or like, 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 like a, yeah. yeah. Or snacks. Or, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Happening as well. But I do think that we are looking at Ford theme park activity over here. I just think there's too many complications to make a truly high level Disney experience for this to be its standalone park. And the fact that they showed us concept art Re showing really quick as extensions of Disneyland DCA. Bricky, come on. Disney experience. I mean, who uses that term? Oh, I know. Disney experience, right? Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> funny, too, is that this is very. And OK, I'm not like talking shit about Universal. OK, I'm just making an observation here because people get really funny if I, you know, but like Universal Studios Hollywood is sort of a convoluted mess, like in terms of like, cause you have a working studio, um, you do have hotels very yeah. close. Yeah, well, I'll just come out and say it. It's, it's all miscombobulated. It's like, it's, no, there's no cohesiveness to it. It's cool. It's a nice, they, they may do with what they had to, because as you said, it is a working studio, but at the same right. time, they, I feel like that they kind of utilize that as sort of a little bit of an excuse. To say, well, it's a working studio, so we'll just like throw this here, we'll throw that there. It's like, can you put stuff together where it kind of makes sense? You can have the multiple levels, obviously you have to, right? But put it together where it makes sense. Well, and that's what that's what I feel this would end up like, like that, where it's like a kind of a mess. You know what I'm saying? There's like yeah. too much stuff 
like different stuff in one spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just leads to messiness. And yeah, that's one thing I love. I love Hollywood, Universal Hollywood. We always have a great time. We went recently mm -hmm. uh, with Wizard and um, with and Weba. Um, it's a fun, it's a fun park. I love the tram tour, all that good stuff, but the layout has never been my favorite. It is a messy park in terms of like getting around, you know, and I feel like this would be a similar situation. Okay. But I do believe that they know that it just wouldn't be a total Disney experience with this bizarre sliced up piece of land theme park expansion. Awesome. Theme park. I don't see it. I don't think so. When Toy Story is a perfectly valuable option. I know this was a little bit of a bizarre kind of weird video, but I saw so many people putting this question in the comments of the last video. Just want to let you know, I read the comments. I think of the Disneyland Ford series as a way for me to communicate with you, my predictions, my feelings on what's going to happen. And everything that I do predict is me studying the past to better predict Disney's future. So when I saw so many people asking what if this would be its own park, I wanted to do a video breaking down why I think that it won't be. But all of this is to be determined. Nobody knows for sure. Just my best guess says this one is a no. And then also I saw a handful of people talking about them acquiring Disneyland Drive. And I don't think that's going to happen either. But who knows? You could be right and I could be wrong. That's the fun in all of this. That's the fun in this video series. Here's the Disneyland Ford playlist. If there's something- Yeah, he, he's absolutely right. We, we speculate a lot too on this channel, a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. And we've been right a lot, but we've also been wrong a lot, you know, but that's yeah. the fun of it, man. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, if we speculate on something and we end up being wrong, it's all good. Like, it's not that serious, you know what I'm saying? And if we speculate and we're right, awesome. <laughs> we got it right, cool, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. So it's not a big deal, but he, I think Bricky has the same kind of mentality with this, right? Where it's like, hey, you know what? Could be wrong. So what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the fun of it. That's the fun of it. So, um, I mean, God forbid if it, God forbid if you're wrong, I mean, then your world oh. just starts crumbling. Oh now. my God. I just, I go in the corner and I cry, I crawl up in a little <laughs> ball. Oh, I was wrong. Oh my God. Um, but, but great video from Bricky. Um, awesome content creator. Um, this Disneyland Forward series that he's doing right now is incredible stuff, man. It's phenomenal. We, we got a text actually from our friend Jay Shear, well, a contributor here on OG55. He, he has a show on the channel called Story Geeks. And he's also a big um, Hey Bricky fan. And he texted us today, right? In that group <laughs> chat, he was like, the new Bricky video is amazing. It got me hyped for Disneyland Forward is what he said, right? He did. And yeah, and uh, I can see I can see why I can see why I did. This was a, this was a fantastic video. So again, if you if you're not subscribed to Bricky, make sure you do. Um, he does great content and he reads the comments, like he said. So if you want to dive into his comment section and 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 speculate, you know, have at it. Um, that's that's pretty cool. And who knows? Maybe he'll make another video based on some of your comments. You never know. But uh, George, any uh, final thoughts before we head out of here? Um, yeah, I mean, the video was as I said, it was genius. It was very uh, intricate in detail. I applaud Bricky for, you know, making this kind of content. Not a lot of people take on this, uh, these challenges when they do these kind of vlogs. Um, but it, it definitely fits him. You know, it, it's like right up his alley and he does it very well. And uh, I encourage him to do more because as he does more, I will watch more. Like every time a new Hey Bricky video comes out, I was like, oh, I'm wondering what he's talking about today because nine out of ten times we're going to react to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's how it's been lately, at least. Right. We've been we've been reacting a lot to this stuff because he's been making great stuff, you know, yeah. and, it, and they're great. They're great conversation pieces. You know they what I'm are. saying? We're like, it's a good jumping off point for really great conversations. And if anyone out there wants to react to our videos, by all means, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're, we're, we're totally cool with that. You know, it's just fun to kind of speculate and bounce ideas off of everybody in the community. And that's what makes it fun. That's why I, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, I'm not as much now as, as I was a few years ago. I'm kind of, kind of losing me a little bit right now, but, um, but Star Wars in general, is fun for me as a franchise because speculation is a big part of that. You know, the speculation le leading up to the sequel trilogy was insanely fun. None of it happened, <laughs> but it was fun. Nonetheless, it was fun. Yeah. But uh, George, if you can let everybody at uh, home know where they can find you on social media, sir. 
Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you can find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There he is. And comment down below with all your thoughts on everything we discussed today in regards to the third park, the possible location. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Thank you all so, so much for watching this episode of OG55. And again, we do want to say at the time the fil at the time of filming this video, um, Richard Sherman, legendary, um, you know, um, um, L um, Disney, <laughs> like, legend. Uh, Disney legend, legendary Disney, Disney legend, <laughs> um, uh, pa unfortunately passed away. We did lose Richard, uh, Richard uh, Sherman, and um, we love and miss uh, Richard. He was just an amazing human being with his brother, uh, Bob and um, what they did for Disney and what they have done for just the world with their beautiful um, music and their optimistic messages forever grateful for, for what yes. they've done. And and we miss you Richard and Bob. And um, yeah, just wanted to say, say that and condolence to the Sherman yeah. family. And yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you, OG and my uh, yeah. Uh, heart goes out to, uh, uh, family and friends of Richard Sherman. I, uh, huge fan, always will be a huge fan. And, uh, it just goes to show it's like, uh, let, let's spread the love around the world a little bit more. Life's too short and, uh, feed the birds, uh, basically feed, right? feed the birds. And, uh, cause honestly, it really is a small world after all. It is, it is, it is, it is. And let's try, it is sad. It is a sad day, but let's try to, uh, let's try to celebrate his life and his music and his work and stuff and, 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 and use this as an opportunity to celebrate what he, what he gave us, the, 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 the countless gifts that him and his brother gave, gave us. So yeah, um, just wanted to say that, but thank you all so, so, much for, so, so much for watching this episode of OG 55 and until the next time. Like iced tea, I'm OG, like iced tea, I'm OG, like iced tea, I'm OG, I'm demon, like iced tea, got mold juice and high tea.